Hello and welcome to the second E Premier League Invitational. I'm Adam Smith and I will be alongside Joe Thompson as we look to find out who's the ultimate FIFA 20 player in the Premier League. Once again, all 20 Premier League clubs represented either by a player from their squad, an ex-player or celebrity fan. We're at day three, Joe, one more match to come. And for everybody watching, please do stay at home and help save lives. It's really important right now. And that the prize fund for this EPL Invitational is being donated to the Players Together Initiative. A really, really great cause. Right, let's have a look at the game that is coming your way. Because it's going to be an exciting one. It's Leicester versus Crystal Palace. We've already seen him once today. James Madison hammered Callum Wilson. Will we do the same with Max Mayer? We can see the full draw as well because there have been some really big results today for anyone that has missed them. Phil Foden, one of the early tournament favourites, has crashed out at the hands of Charlie Taylor's Burnley. He looked really, really strong. Norwich as well progressed past Tottenham. That was Max Ahrens getting the best of Ryan Sessegnon. And most recently, you just saw John Egan, a surprise package, defeating Jofra Archer, the England cricket star, 4-3. So some great games, and I'm hoping for another one now, Smithy. But do you want to just explain the rules for everybody at home? Yeah, these are the all-important rules you need to be aware of for the EPL Invitational. It is a straight knockout tournament. You lose one game, that is it. Goodbye, you are out. Uh, every round consists of just one game, and every Premier League club represented either by a player from their squad, an ex-pro or a celebrity fan. Now, these are the all-important in-game rules. Each game will consist of two six-minute halves. In the event of a draw, golden goal will be used to determine the winner we saw. Golden goal used in the first tournament, including in the final itself as Diogo Jota of Wolves defeated Trent Alexander-Arnold of Liverpool in the final uh, on that golden goal. 85-rated Premier League squads in kickoff mode to establish who is the ultimate FIFA 20 player. Yeah, I took you guys through some of the big results we've already seen today. We can see some of the big goals we've seen today now as well. The first match saw Max Ahrens beat Ryan Sessegnon. He actually missed a penalty in the third minute, which would have made this game even worse. A really, really big save there from Hugo Lloris. But it didn't matter, did it? Because Max Ahrens in that first half really put on one hell of a display. He went 1-0 up. It was quickly doubled when Buendia went through, squared it to Puki, and he made it two. And before half-time, Hernandez made it 3-0 to Norwich City. The second half saw Tottenham come back somewhat. The first goal went to Sessegnon. People were saying the comeback could be on. Look at the fist-pumping celebration. But it wasn't to be. Max Ahrens went up the other end, made it 4-1, and Ryan nearly walked out the room. He was so angry with the result. The next game saw Phil Foden playing against Charlie Taylor. Phil Foden was actually one of the favourites for the tournament. Talked about how he was finishing weekend leagues, 25 wins, but he could do nothing to stop this Burnley machine progressing. Lots of physicality in the team and they made the most of it. Jack Cork getting a surprise double. Charlie Taylor saying he doesn't score many goals in training, but he did on the day. Man City got back into the game through Sergio Aguero, but they couldn't do Anything to stop Jack Cork. Here he is with the double, arriving late like a prime Paul Scholes. The game was put to bed finally when Jay Rodriguez spun and finished into the top corner as Burnley ran out 4-3 victors over Manchester City. They nearly came back. Look, great finish by Aguero, but it wasn't to be. Most recent game then, Manchester United versus Sheffield United. One of the goals of the tournament so far there from Paul Pogba. You can see what that meant to Joffre Archer. Got him out of his seat. But John Egan hit back and hit back quickly with his own screamer. You can see he was very happy about that. Joffre Archer, though, was not about that because he gave the ball away in a terrible area. Absolutely furious with himself for such a poor throw out from David De Gea. He then brought the game back. And Manchester United took advantage, but then Sheffield United went back up the other end. It was a truly end-to-end -end game. Sheffield United then went in front with that goal. Brilliant goal from McGoldrick in the 90th minute. What a game that was, Smithy. 4-3 to Sheffield United. 
Yeah, what a game and what a day we've seen. So many goals, four games uh, so far. And this is our fifth and final game of day three. I'm pleased to say we can talk to players. So first up representing Leicester, James Madison, who's already come through one game. There he is, Madders. A uh, first question. Talk to me about that beard, mate, because that is sensational. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit out of control, to be honest. I'm not really sure I'm liking it. But um, I said to myself, I'm not going to touch my hair or my, or my beard or my eyebrows or anything. Uh, in, in the lockdown period. So I'm going to see what, how I look come the end of it. Yeah, to be fair, mate, I am saying with this Barnet, so I can't really talk. So fair, fair play. <laughs> <laughs> um, Madders, you've already come through one game against your good friend Callum, Callum Wilson. We can have a look at the highlights of that game because we thought it'd be quite a tough game. Here are the highlights, but it was, I mean, as emphatic as it, it gets, 8-1 victory. Did you surprise yourself with how emphatic this one was? Yeah, I can't actually see the highlights, but I remember the game, obviously. I just thought, I just, I didn't want to be like overconfident in the interviews beforehand and like start giving it all like the big talk and then go on to lose. Cause it, we did have a tight game before, but I think um, the quality came out and I took out to the cleaner, so I was happy with that one. And the war of words was great. You're obviously good friends, um, teammates from your Coventry days. Can you inform us of what was said after this game? <laughs> a few WhatsApp messages were exchanged. Um, <laughs> he actually wanted a rematch straight after, but I, I had a couple of things I needed to do. So, um, but um, he wants to, he wants to get his revenge. I'm not sure I'm going to let. I think I'm just going to let uh, let the eight one be the, the last result we ever have together. And you scored with yourself as well. What's that like scoring with your in-game character? Because for people like myself and Joe in the commentary team, we obviously can't. We, we can never experience that. So, what is that like scoring with your in-game character? Yeah, do you know what? I've, the weirdest thing that I find is when. When obviously you score and they do like the, the close up of the celebration and you see like your game yeah. face and like how similar it looks and stuff. But um, I've always said it's a surreal feeling to see, to see myself on FIFA, but um, hopefully I can score a few more on this one. Now, you were gutted as well when that went in because uh, for people that don't know, a record is 8 0 in the first EPL Invitational. That was Andre Gomez beating Reese James, and you were on to match that and he scored very late. So it goes to show the levels you set yourself that even when you win 8 1, you're still a tiny bit disappointed. Yeah, especially because it was against Callum as well. Me and Callum are obviously very close friends. And if I got, if I set the record against him, I, I'd never let him live that down. So I was good to see him score. Uh, yeah, you did declare yourself the king of Coventry. Um, uh, have you got a message for your opponent just quickly, Max Meyer? Do you know much about him? And do you have a message for him going into this one? Uh, I know he's a very good player. I mean, I'm just hoping he's not as good as FIFA is in real life, to be honest. So. There we go. OK, so we'll uh, we'll await to see how good he is, because we haven't seen him play in this tournament yet, of course. Uh, those are the thoughts, Joe, James Madison before the game. Yeah, we can speak to Max now as well. Max, there was James saying he hopes you're not as good at FIFA as you are in real life. Just how good are you at FIFA? I don't know exactly. We will see today. Um, I haven't played that much uh, recently and I've just seen the result, the result of uh, Madison against uh, against his opponent 8-1 and um, yeah I think I have a tough opponent today. So you're feeling a little bit nervous seeing that James scored eight goals in his first game? A little bit because I told you I haven't played that much and I don't know how good I am today and I will give my best and then we will see. There we go then. Uh, good luck to both of these players. Smithy back over to you. Yeah, great to hear the thoughts of both the players going into our final game of day three. Let's bring in the thoughts of our casters, Brandon Smith and Richard Buckley. Brandon, we spoke earlier in the day about how impressed we've been with James Madison and, and what prospect he is. He, he's, he's someone that could go on and win this tournament, isn't he? Yeah, he's he's, de he's definitely kind of under that umbrella of players we need to watch out for here at the EPA Invitational. I think not just the fact that he won 8-1 on his last game, but he's had experience of playing these charity FIFA tournaments. And of course, with the lockdown, Everyone's had time on FIFA 20. So I think James Madison's one of those players that's took the advantage of that and has got as much time in on the game as he could. So watch out for this man. If he does get through, he will be in a quite a tough quarter final up against Southampton. And a word on his opponent today, Richard. Uh, Max Meyer representing Crystal Palace. Now, we don't know a great deal about Max. Obviously, he hasn't played yet. Just a reminder that James Madison had to come through that round one qualifier. Because of the luck of the draw, Max Meyer went straight through to the round of 16. You obviously uh, have, have a, a huge FIFA knowledge of a lot of players. Do you know anything about Max Meyer going into this? What can you tell us? 
I know one thing, Smithy. I know that he's German, and German FIFA players are pretty outstanding <laughs> on FIFA. Um, you just look through the history books. German FIFA players are unbelievable. The current world champion in FIFA is Mo Alba, a German FIFA player. There is one thing, though, that me and James Madison have got in common. It's not the footballing ability. It's the hair and the beard. We're both growing it. So um, I can get on board with that. I can get on board with the uh, the hair. He liked that. So, uh, guys, if you can hear us, Max and James, uh, we are ready to go. So if you want to start the game, we are ready to go. This is our fifth and final matchup of day three, of course. Uh, Brandon, this is one I'm very much looking forward to, mate, this. Yeah, it's going to be a good one. I can't wait to get this one underway. As we said, whoever wins will go up against Michael Oberthemi. You had a fantastic game, Richard, didn't he, in the round of 16. A really, really convincing win. It won't be an easy game for whoever gets through this one. No, absolutely. I mean, if you look at the sort of victories that we've had so far, I think you saw a definite improvement. Madison in the football staying home, got knocked out in the semi-finals, but he wasn't convincing in any of his performances that game against Callum Wilson, he was convincing, Brandon. Well, here we go, then. We've already seen James Madison in action a little bit earlier today, and what a convincing result. It was eight goals to one against a good friend in the footballing world in Callum Wilson. But more importantly, he scored two goals of himself in that game, Richard, and he looked very, very confident. Max Meyer, I'm sure, was watching somewhere in the background. You heard him mention he saw a bit of that game that James Madison played nearly today, just doing... A little bit of kind of research before his matchup is the first chance of the game. It will be defended well in the end by Leicester City. Of course, Leicester kicking from right to left in their away pink strip. And it will be Crystal Palace from left to right in this one. We might only be three minutes into the game, but I've, I've recognised something already. The way that Max Meyer fizzed that ball into Zaha's feet, that was a driven pass. That shows a pretty good understanding of the controls of FIFA. He knows what he wants to do with certain areas. It was a nice driven through ball, a driven pass, and then a through ball around the outside. It's just a little intricate details that some players haven't been using so far. They've not had the full sort of control over the game and how the flow of the game has been going. Here is Zaha now. Chance now to go one up for Max. Fantastic save. Michael throwing that one away of course the beauty of your FIFA 20 you can get the managers as well on the sideline there's Roy Hodgson watch out for that man on your stream Ian Acho bagged a handful of goals early today what a ball that could have been to Jamie Vardy had to make that tackle yeah. at the back and it's that a tackle that was made uh, Callum Wilson <clears throat> it was sort of the Vardy and Ian Acho show, Brandon. They absolutely stole it. I think Ian Acho scored, what, four goals? Madison got a couple. Vardy got a couple as well. It was a an unbelievable attacking performance from James Madison. But I think he's got a different level of opponent in front of him right now in Max Meyer. Beautiful back heel. Wilfred Zaha's in. Shots at the near post. Schmeichel does well to save it. Max Meyer looks promising. Does as well. I know when you said... Of course, he is from Germany. We know the current E World Cup champion. If you follow FIFA to that level, he's a German player as well. And they've always been very much keen on the sticks and on the virtual pitch. I'll tell you what, it's been all him so far in this game. Here's Zaha now, still looking for that first goal in this game. And it will be. Max Meyer on the edge of the box, played it short into Townsend. Is it going to be a direct shot? It'll be a direct goal as well. Perfect start. I'll tell you what. Did you just see the little nod of approval from Max Meyer? He scored that goal and they just gave a, a slight nod to the camera to all the Palace fans at home. The quickness of the short free kick as well right there from Max Meyer. He knew exactly what he wanted to do. He almost had it engraved in his brain. Play a couple of players over it, short free kick, bang, Andros Townsend into the back of the net. I think that was a little nod to the Palace fans saying you're in safe hands, all right? <laughs> Maybe they'll go one step further than Wilfred was able to. Of course, Zaha did represent the Eagles last time out in the EPL Invitational. Did really well. Made it to the quarterfinal stages, losing to the hands of Raheem Sterling in what was a really tightly contested match. Only won by a goal in the end, looking for a second. Max Meyer now. He's had all the balls so far. He's had all the chances. 
Another short corner from Mayer, just offside on this occasion. I think Madison as well knows that it's a different kettle of fish right now. It's a different opponent. It's a different game than Callum Wilson. This is a serious battle on his hands with the Foxes. Vardy who scored so many goals alongside Ian Acho into Ian Acho. Patient defending though, just you saw the little bit of jockey in there at the back from Tim Cahill. And here's a chance to break now. Townsend, he's got pace. So is the likes of Zaha. Can he play that one more ball inside? Might have been pushed over, but does very well at the back. James Madison picks up the ball of himself, in fact, now. What can he do? Only one goal down, nearly a third of this game gone. Big switch of play as far as Barnes. Back to Ianacho. Lovely. Oh, it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. James Madison cutting Max open right there. Beautiful play. Switch the play from right to left. Got the wide players involved and then quick play back in field to Jamie Vardy. Slotted it past the goalkeeper. Ever reliable Jamie Vardy. One apiece. We've talked uh, quite a lot, Brandon, about these games being more competitive as we get in further and further into the days. I think we're hitting the peak of competitive what, action what, that we've seen so far. Oh! Sorry about that. I just got a little bit excited there. The ball came over the top. Wilfred Zaha was through. And on another day, Richard, that should be 2-1 to Crystal Palace. I thought for a second you were offside, actually, Wilfred Zaha. But just on that weak foot as well, three-star weak foot for Wilfred. Just putting it wide of the target. I think he had a little bit more time as well, Max Meyer, than he, he first thought. Madison now, that drag back. Proven to be so good for him. Fantastic. Close oh. control dribbling. James Madison. Wants to score of himself. Wants to summon. It's going to be a penalty. Pen. And Tim Cale could be in the referee's book early on here. 36 minutes on the clock. He's going to get away with that one. But a chance from the spot. Surely he's got to take it with himself. Surely he's got to take it with himself or he's going to give it to... Of course he is. Here comes James Madison now. To potentially put the Foxes 2-1 up it against Crystal Palace. Madison steps up. Down the middle. It's saved. He read it. Did Max. He stuck to his guns straight down the centre of the goal. Still one apiece. not going to get a better chance than that you will not get a better chance than that from the spot we've seen penalties today Richard in so many games and they've all been saved yeah they really have haven't they I don't I'm trying to think the last penalty that we saw scored was probably from Jorginho with uh, with Chelsea Emerson in control slotting it to the left hand side nice player here getting Tosin on that left side looking for a driven pass into the box easily defended there by James Madison look for that potential switcher player as well on this left hand side just try playing into a quite a tight area there if you have just tuned in this is our final game of day three of the EPL Invitational we've seen so many fantastic games already this is to confirm our last quarter final as well whoever oh. wins this will go up against Southampton Max Meyer oh he's cheeky oh no it's a cheeky finish Richard but it's just not a good one Inches past the post. That would have been a fantastic, truly class goal there from Max Meyer. He's had a couple of chances, Brandon. With we Wilfred say, Zaha. Been a half of missed chances, wasted opportunities, unless it's going to change now. There's another one. Who is going to take these opportunities? Who is going to, as you said earlier, grab this game out of the scruff of its neck? It needs a warrior on this pitch. Someone to step up. That's going to do us four half time. Three minutes of additional time have been played at the break. Leicester one, Crystal Palace one. Yes, one all at the halfway point. They cannot be separated. What a tight match this is. Have a quick word with both players, James Madison and Max Meyer. James, big moment in that game. Missed penalty. And it was missed by James Madison. Yeah, so I thought I'd go down the middle and hope the keeper died, but he read me. Um, 
No, he's good. He's he's a good FIFA player. I'm not hearing that he hasn't played um, much lately. Doesn't seem like that. You're not having you're not having his pre-match. You played himself down. You're not having nah, it. Nah, no chance. Got in my head as well. I was expecting an easy ride. <laughs> Will James Madison be having words with James Madison for that penalty? I've had it. I've given him a little talent off at half time in the dressing room, and he's ready to go out now. Okay, Max. Quickly from you. Quick thoughts on the first half. One all. Very very close match. This one. Yeah, it's a tough game so far. Um, I think we both have our chances and we will see. I hope I can score another goal in the second half and don't receive one. OK, we will see indeed and we will see right away because we are underway in the second half. Let's hand you back to our casters, Brandon Smith and Richard Buckley. Thank you very much, Smithy. Yes, we're into the final, I should say, half of today's action. Unless we are going to be going to golden goal, there might be another game to be played today here comes Leicester from the word go the score is 1-1 but the story of the first half Richard has been missed chances penalties missed a chip was missed many shots just wide yeah not I mean not even hitting the target if you're gonna really go down to the letter of the book on how a, a shot on target is sort oh. of received as a stat Mayer looking to play through James Madison there, but Wilfred Ndidi standing up strong in the middle of the pitch. Just going to run through to Guaita is that chance. But as you see Molly's game sort of progress, Brandon, you're going to see more rush chances. You're going to see more snatch chances. And it's going to be either a mistake or a little bit of magic to win this game. It's a completely different match as well, isn't it, from what James Madison's already experienced so far in today's EPL Invitational. He played earlier today in a round one game, which was needed for either Bournemouth or Leicester to get through to the round of 16. And he was able to win that game. Very comfortable scoreline. Eight goals to one. This one, so different. So much more contested. Every single tackle means so much. Every single pass, every single chance. Ian Atcho, surely on its own, he went for the cutback. Was it the right decision? I think looking back, obviously, hindsight's a wonderful thing. Could have taken a chance there with Ian Nacho, but I would have probably looked for the cutback as well. Look for that 100% chance. Ian Nacho's got another opportunity. Whipped to the back post. Van Arnold's over it. The ball's bouncing around the box. That's Sacco at the back, getting a leg out. Frantic FIFA. In the E Premier League Invitational. Here come Palace. Running in numbers, ball over the top into Zaha. Chance for Max Meyer. Just like that. From Leicester nearly scoring down one end. To Wilfred Zaha. Snatching a goal. Down the other end at Sellers Park. And again, Max Meyer has been very, very comfortable with the over the top through balls. Just that lovely little dink over the last man there for Madison on this occasion Zaha slotting it past the goalkeeper and into the back of the net as well two goals to one with two thirds of this game already completed I don't know if he meant that or not but that would have been an unbelievable turn there from Zaha couldn't latch onto it I feel like there's still a few more goals left in this one Max Mayer was able to get a second one in this game. It would be a bit of breathing space for him. Here comes Barnes. Chance for Leicester. Barnes on his own. And into the back of the net. Leicester will respond. James Madison will respond for the Foxes. This game is going all the way, Richard. It's a great finish, isn't it? From Barnes on that left-hand side. We talked about the danger of the wide players. They would be the sort of catalyst to Leicester's success in this competition. For Max Meyer, it's playing through the centre of the pitch, getting Zaha on the ball as much as possible, getting the runners around Zaha. For Leicester, got to get the ball out wide, get it into Ian Atchell making those darty runs, Vardy making those darty runs. He had a joke as well, Richard, at half-time. He was having a few words with his player. He missed that penalty. He saw when he scored, pointing towards the TV, pointing, I'm sure, at Barnes saying, 
Unbelievable finish, my friend. Fantastic run, and he went all on his own. 20 minutes left in this one. If we are all square after 90 minutes, we will be going to golden goal. Lovely turn. Jamie Vardy is on his own. Will he go on his own? A half drag back. Guessing which way is he going to go? Cost back inside. It's Perez. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic scenes there from James Madison. And it was with Perez scoring the goal. I've, I've got to say that's a, a very, very well worked goal. The half a drag back inside the box, the keeping calm the in the final the third. I said this game will be won by a mistake or a moment of magic. Abracadabra, because you might have just seen the winning goal right there. It's not over yet, though. There still will be a chance. Palace won't go down without a fight. As we said, whoever wins this will confirm our final quarter final. Here comes Max Meyer. Imagine if he was to get the goal on the edge of the box. Schmeichel had to parry that one away. Another short corner played here by Max Meyer. He's going to be offside though again. He's done that a couple of times. Only 10 minutes left to play. Each chance that you create is like gold dust. In a one-legged game of FIFA, you cannot squander opportunities. That's a fantastic switch of play. You see Madison there not forcing the ball through, keeping it calm. Looking to play Barnes in again. He knew what chance Couple of chances well, left. He knew because Vardy could just dig that ball into the path of the ongoing Ian Acho. Max Meyer to pick it up now. Just seven minutes left in this game. Zaha back to Townsend. Palace looking for a way back in it. Are you unbelievable block at the back from Johnny Evans? Corner played in towards the front post. It's flicked on. It's cleared off the line. Just get rid of the ball. Mm. Off it goes for another corner. All the pressure on the Foxes now. Whipped in it goes. Ayu's at the front post. It's headed away by Johnny Evans. But still back to a Palace player again. He's we'll offside again, he's Meyer. Oh, he's offside, wow. Got a pile up inside the box there. That ball literally could have gone anywhere. That switch of play, he's done it so often. Getting the ball out wide to Chilwell, who's pushed nice and high on that left-hand side. Vardy, some good running, but... Gary Cahill getting back, winning the ball. And one more it. Palace surge. This is it. You can see Max Meyer getting closer to the screen as well. As soon as that ball gets closer to the goal, Townsend must whip it across. Must be a chance. It's bouncing Max Meyer. Oh, he could have been the hero. He could have been the hero for Palace. And in time of just two minutes. Corner played short. Meyer into the box. He's flicked on and it's just over the bar. Captain Casper in the goal. Keeping... Leicester in front. What a save from Schmeichel. He's pushed all the players up. And he's gone long from the goal kick. 20 seconds or thereabouts left on the clock. High risk. It's high risk though, Richard. Paul can come straight back. And in time, Timmins has been played. And that will be it. Leicester City have had an unbelievable day three here in the EPO <laughs> invitation. You can see exactly what it means to James Madison. He will go through to the quarterfinals tomorrow to face up against Michael Oberfemi of Southampton. Matters, you seem pretty pumped after that win. Pumping the <laughs> chest, absolutely delighted, aren't you? Yeah, delight. He's a good player. He's very good. He's a good FIFA player. I can tell he plays. Um, just little things like the way he defends and the way he passes and stuff. Um, and to be fair, I had to ride my luck at times. Uh, Keeper pulled off a few very good saves, but listen, you don't, you can't complain, can you? That's why. That's why he's in the net. I have to say, Matters, there were some extraordinary facials going on there during that game from you. <laughs> oh, I don't even want to watch this back. <laughs> was, there, was there at any stage, did you, were you worried that you were going to lose the game? No. When I went 2-1 down, I always knew I, there was a lot of time left. So, I uh, got it back to 2-2. Two, two. I felt comfortable. I felt good in the forward area, isn't it? Um, but, he, like, like I said, he's, he's a good player. Um, and on another day, he might have won. But today was my day. Yeah, today was your day. Obviously, you beat Callum Wilson earlier in the day. Was this a much harder game than Callum put up? Yeah, much harder. Callum's like 
putting a knife through butter, you know. Um, but that one was quite a tough <laughs> one, and I had, to, I had to work my chances and stuff, and, and take them to be fair. So uh, yeah, delighted with that one. Max, commiserations to you. A very close game. You missed some big chances. Are you disappointed? Yeah, a little bit. But I think it was a good game. Um, congratulations to him. But when I see the facts, I had more shots and more possession, more corners. So I think, uh, yeah, <laughs> it was a tough game. But yeah, it was unfortunately but... I lost. So, so matters. There's Max saying that he had the better statistical edge over you. <laughs> Did you get a bit lucky? I don't think winning corners um, counts to a goal, so I'm going to have to disagree <laughs> with him on that one. But uh, like he said, it was a very close game and he's a good player, so uh, I'm glad to have beat him. Yeah. There we go. Max, do you hope matters goes all the way to the final and, and wins the competition? Yeah, I wish him that because I lost against him and when he when he wins the tournament, so I can say I lost against the champion, so <laughs> that's why. Thanks, bro. <laughs> Matters, next up you've got Michael Obafemi. He beat Tony Bellew 7-0 in his first game. So, uh, are you a little bit worried about facing him? Uh, well, I'll, yeah, he's obviously going to be good, um, but... Uh... I can't imagine Tony Belly spends a lot of time on FIFA, to be honest. Um, so I'm not sure how much to look into that uh, scoreline. Hope he doesn't see me say that either. Um, but uh, yeah, I reckon he'll be a good opponent. It'll be another, another tough game. Cheers, lads. Thanks very much. Congratulations, James. Uh, unfortunate for you, Max. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye, guys. See you later. Bye bye. Right, Smithy, let's talk about that one because that was some game, wasn't it? <laughs> Oh, what a game. I, I feel a bit sorry for Tony Bellew. He's still getting hammered for that game that happened <laughs> ages ago. People are still referring to it. Let it go. Don't, don't have a go at Tony Bellew. You will, you will regret it. But we've got to talk about James Madison because what I love about James Madison is he's come through a, a, quite an easy game, let's have it right, against Callum Wilson, but was very clinical in that game. But he's also come through a very tough game that he's come from uh, behind in periods of that game. So James Madison looks to, to be a very complete FIFA player. And on the subject of players that are very expressive, he has given us some of the best celebrations we've seen the fist pump we've seen him kissing the badge there as well Leicester fans will be absolutely loving the fact that James Madison is representing them Joe yeah James is desperate to win this tournament you can just tell can't you maybe it's got something to do with the fact that Wilfred indeed he crashed out so early in EPL Invitational one I think the pressure is on his shoulders we can have a look then at today's results because there have been some blockbuster games for your way Norwich beat Tottenham 4-1. That was Max Ahrens beating Ryan Sessegnon in the first of today's last 16 ties. Burnley then beat Manchester City. Charlie Taylor in a bit of a shock result against one of the favourites, Phil Foden, but that was an expert performance. Manchester United also crashed out today. We had to say goodbye to Joffre Archer as John Egan swept him aside 4-3 in a brilliant match. And you just saw then James Madison progress through to the quarterfinals. He beat Crystal Palace 3-2. Here's the draw in full then. We've got confirmation of all of our quarterfinal matchups. Norwich against Chelsea. We'll see Max Ahrens go up against Brazilian Emerson. Sheffield United against Brighton. We'll see two Irish teammates battling it out in John Egan and Aaron Connolly. Quarterfinal number three is Burnley versus Aston Villa. Charlie Taylor, one of the dark horses of the competition, coming up against expert player Keenan Davis. In the final match, we'll see the most animated player left in the competition, James Madison, come up against Michael Obafemi Smith. Yeah, so all of our ex pros and our celebrity fans are out. Uh, the last 16 will, uh, the, sorry, the quarterfinals will all be contested by current Premier League players. And there's some very tough games to call. That is it. For day three, we'll be back tomorrow with four quarterfinal matchups. We cannot wait for that. Just a final reminder from us, please do all stay safe, stay home in an attempt to help save lives. Thanks for joining us and come again tomorrow. Bye-bye.